4chan is nothing new for those that are veterans of the internet. It's one of the oldest message boards on the internet that keeps your identity completely anonymous. And throughout the years, the Anons have had several conversations. Conversations about politics, religions, the meaning of life, the time they all thought they found God on a corrupted hardware, or even the time Anons got together and decided to troll Shia LaBeouf. But for me, there's one archive that I hold dear to my heart, for it was the start of a seven year plus rage of a game that will never ever be completed. A game I wanted to see brought to fruition. This is the story of Yandere Sim and its mentally ill degenerate creator Yandere Dev. Now for those who don't use 4chan I'll briefly explain how the boards work. Each board covers a varietal topic that has an abbreviation with it. Like you have POL for politically incorrect which if you ever want to be offended just go on that board. You have VT for VTubers, G for technology, X for paranormal, B for random, which basically has anything you could want under the sun, from cooking recipes to someone's leaked nudes, and of course, the one we'll be talking about today, V, which is for video games, where on April 1st, 2014, the first mentioning of the Yandere Simulator game would ever be pitched to the board of Anons. This supposedly coming from the Yandere dev himself, where he says, let us discuss the game mechanics of a Yandere simulator. The pick related to it all is you know from the Future Diaries. Not best Yandere girl, but I would say she's up there. Still really cute. And it follows a green text story from there. Set in a school. Pick a boy. Stalk him. Kills girls who flirt with slash talk to slash look at him. Stealth gameplay. Have to stalk the boy without getting spotted. Set up accidents to kill girls, or kill girls without getting caught, using a variety of school supplies. Dating sim gameplay. Have to win the heart of the boy you have chosen without letting him know you are a jealous and murderous psychopath. Bad ending. Kill the boy and kill yourself. Good ending. Kill all the harlots who tried to steal the boy from you, and live happily ever after. Now, after reading this, the whole board kind of leaned forward and said, You have my attention. And from there, they snowballed ideas, level designs, environments, what the kids would look like, how everything would interact, how you could set up multiple different Hitman, Agent 47 type assassination plots, all on these girls that were trying to steal your beloved senpai. And that's where Yandere Dev would come in and say he would be the one to take up this project. And that's where the disaster would start happening. After poking V's brain about a Yandere simulator, Yandere Dev would actually go on to create a YouTube channel where he would upload the original Yandere simulator prototype. This was just 29 seconds of gameplay that would be the hook, line, and sinker for most of the Yandere sim fanbase. And from there, he would actually keep up a good progress report of keeping people up to date on what was changing, things he had in mind for the game, and how things were turning out. Things like visual novel cutscene testing, the ideas of concepts for titles, character customization, the ideas of reputation and sanity in the Andari Sim, how Senpai would react if he caught you stalking him or even catching you killing, and he actually did good on his progress reports. But the more that people joined the community, the more people that would write in asking if they could join the development team, or if they had constructive criticism for what he could change or tweak about the game. All these that would be sent in emails to his private email, in which he addressed in a mental breakdown, saying that he can't work on the game if he's forced to answer every single email that would accumulate to a tw about 12 hours of his day. And that made a lot of people question because no one's forcing him to answer these emails, nor is anyone forcing him to spend 12 hours answering these emails. After this mental breakdown, some people would actually ask if they could come on to answer emails for him so that he could strictly work on the game. And again, this kind of got him angry and he demanded people stop emailing him. They, of course, did not and kept emailing him about saying, hey, we'll take off the stress of emails and fan service if you just work on the game. There was also a time where coders actually got their hands on the coding of Yandere Sim and when they got a look at it, it was very spaghetti-like, being that the code just kind of ran on and on when it could very be, very easily be simplified into a line or two. And when showed this to Yandere Dev, he took it as an assault to his character and pride and said that he's not a coder and that what he's doing works and it should be fine and that no one should be messing with his code. 
And this is kind of the beginning of the mental breakdown of YD, because more and more people were starting to turn onto this game, especially after a lot of popular YouTubers like Markiplier, PewDiePie, Jacksepticeye, all played the game, turning on brand new audiences to this game. And it's safe to say that YD wasn't the best at handling stress or pressure. Some would say at this point he was so uptight that if you shoved a lump of coal up his ass in two weeks, you had a diamond. But it was after all these popular YouTubers and gamers were playing Yandere Sim that he kind of changed his whole perspective on how to develop this game. And well, he says it best himself. Instead of seeing Yandere Simulator as a checklist of tasks to complete, I started seeing the game as something that should constantly be updated and improved based on what I observed from the fan base. Now, both methods that Yandere Dev had just mentioned do have their place in game development when you're working as a team, per se. If you have a checklist, you're mainly using it for a game that's still in development that you're trying to get ready for some sort of deadline. So you and your team can hammer out what's crucial for the game to work so that when you put it out on the market, people will actually like it and it works. Whereas that constant cycle of listening to community feedback and bettering things for the future really only helps when you have a game like Destiny where you're having it season after season adding new guns, weapons, and those sweet sweet raids we all love. But again, those are great for teams, but not when a guy's working alone on this. Because you'll find that when he takes this new approach of listening to this cycle of feedback, that Yandaredev kind of sets himself into a sort of limbo of damned if you do, damned if you don't where you find that he never learned early on in life that you're not going to please everyone in life. And by doing so, he constantly implements things into the game that people will later complain about and tell him he doesn't need, only for him to try and find some sort of runaround to make both parties happy. It's a bit confusing saying that, but let me give you an example of this. Imagine there was a bus system in the game. Before this bus system, the way the game would work was that you would exit your house and you would load into the school. There, you're done. No need for any more immersion. But now with this bus system implemented, you walk outside your house, go to a bus, bus stop, and for 13 seconds you load up the game, riding a bus, you know, it's simulated bus ride, and then you arrive at the school. Yes, it's very unnecessary, especially with what the previous renditions of the game had, but now you have this bus system implemented and you feel like you've wasted so much time, it has to fit in somewhere. So now you create this whole town around it. You have this whole fast travel system and you create landmarks and theme parks to go to, all so that this bus system has a place in it. And that's the constant problem with this game, is that the game is suggested something, and then we always have to build around it and take our minds off of very crucial things. Things like more assassination plots, more endings, multiple rivals, maybe have a murder mystery aspect to it where we can kind of try and deduce who our rival is, not have them tell us who it is right off the bat. But instead, we have to focus on the small, minute details that don't matter in the game. And even while the main game is still in the demo, he is going to talk about how he has created another version of the game where it takes place in the 1980s, where you play as the Yandere's mother trying to seduce the Yandere's father, when the base game itself isn't even complete in his own words. Yes, by any other words it would be complete, but in, by his words, it still has to grow upon. Why would you create a whole nother game mode for this game when you haven't even finished the base game? And that's just it. That That's, that's, that's it. I've, I've lost it. That's the constant problem with this game, is that it's in the hands of a guy who doesn't know what to manage his time with. And whenever he comes up with an idea, he has to put that at the forefront of everything. Putting aside very crucial things that are needed for the game to actually work and bring people back. Uh, on the original thread, there's someone who asks the question about, you know, can we implement a system where you could choose to whether stalk a boy or a girl senpai? A very simple uh, mechanic that you could add in by what you've seen so far. Yet this is seven plus years later, how many renditions of the game later, and yet you can only still stalk a male senpai. Seven years of this. This is what's been going on for a long time. And honestly, at this point, I'm fed up with it. 
I've been fed up with it for a long time because this game is just never going to be complete. It's not a game at this point. It's a prison. It's a prison for Yandere Dev to live in a pipe dream where he believes he's creating some sort of magnum opus to gaming. When in reality, he's just a sick, delusional, degenerate person lost in their own sauce here. If there's a team or someone who has more experience in game development and wants to try and create a Yandere game just like his or similar to his, I bet you could do it. Because if this is what he could achieve in seven years, I could probably achieve in five months or maybe even a year of time because I know what I need to get down. You could see it. The roadmap is there. And I don't want to say that to spite him. I want to say it because it shows how much time he's wasted on this. And how the only true freedom that he could possibly have from this game is dying. 